This is my first novel, the original 1982. It's out on May 28th, and I thought I would read you a little bit of it. Uh, this is the prologue. You were the first little fish. We were walking on Columbus Avenue from the Sheridan, the building where your father lived, to the Cafe Miriam where I worked as a waitress. I had terrible morning sickness and had to sit on the curb to keep from throwing up. Your father told me to put my head between my knees. The Cafe Miriam was a restaurant on the west side of Columbus. It was across the street from the Museum of Natural History and a big neighborhood hangout in those days. It was there your father and I first met. I was working brunches and lunches mostly. I'd never waited tables before, but there wasn't much to it, just hard work. I remember exactly where he was seated, at a foretop by the window, across from the bar. He had three friends with him. One was the music journalist, Roberto Rodriguez, and the other two were fans, or yes-men. Your father was famous, they said, the Bob Dylan of his country. When he saw me, he grabbed his heart and gasped pretending I was too beautiful to bear. He was a master at seduction, charming and bright, with intelligent dark eyes and a Cupid's bow mouth. He could have any woman he wanted, and he had plenty. I was 21, a former art school student and Long Island girl, slender with long, dirty blonde hair and hazel eyes, pretty in a natural way. I still am, and it's 30 years later. Your father rightly predicted I'd be a handsome woman as I aged. He was 13 years my senior, but looked even older than that. His hairline was receding, and he wore a Hawaiian shirt with a pair of baggy jeans belted up high. He seemed more mature for other reasons, too. He was street smart and well-educated, the scrappiest dog on the block. He liked to win and was used to winning. If you had inherited the best traits of both of us, You'd have been smart and a beauty, a lover of music, a sensitive girl. I'm fairly certain your father would have broken your heart the way he broke mine. He didn't want you to be born and never had any children after. He was his own child, the apple of his own eye, an artist, showman, and politician. I spared you that at least, but I spared you life itself, and for that I'm filled with regret. If I could go back to any day in my life, I'd go back to that morning on Columbus Avenue. Morning sickness, head between my knees. I'd go back with courage, I'd say, Maestro, I'm not having an abortion. Get ready. You're going to have a child. And since I'm the writer of this story and can do whatever I want, that's what I'll do. Go back to that day in 1982. And uh, check back because I'll be reading chapters from it. Again, it comes out on May 28th. It's being published by Harper Collins. Uh, the imprint is William Morrow. And uh, here's what the cover looks like. And I'll see you soon. Thanks for listening.